let's talk about some of the score sheets that your team will receive at the end of the practice tournament in March. So we've already, in another video, talked about the zip grade forms that your team is going to receive and how to use the category indexes to, to uh, review those. So we're not going to focus on that here. Uh, in addition, uh, your team is going to get a, a, a large stack of, of other score sheets that come from the other various events that don't use zip grade forms. So, and I just want to point out that these, all of these forms come back after practice tournaments. This is not um, something that we do after the main tournament in May. Uh, this is intended to try to give your team a chance to learn where they're strong and where they're weak um, after the practice tournament so you know where to focus your energies um, for, the, for the month or two that uh, between your practice tournament and the tournament in May. So let's go through some of the ones that you're going to get back. So for Starry Starry Night and uh, another event, Code Busters, uh, your team will receive what I'll call is a score breakdown. And this is, uh, the, the event supervisor has gone to the extra effort of, um, after calculating the score on your test, of, of aggregating subtotals for each of the, what we'll, I'll call categories, that are on that test. And so in the case of Starry Starry Night, it's mechanics, general solar system seasons, and there's a certain number of points that are possible on that Starry Starry Night test. The supervisor has added up for you the subtotals in each category, and so you have now have a better idea of where you're strong and where you're weak. So this particular team doesn't seem to know much about moon phases uh, and uh, didn't do very great on constellations. But the images, they seem to be well prepared for. So anyways, it gives you an idea of, of what, what categories um, your team might be strong in and weak in and where to focus your energy. Same is true for the Codebuster event, our new uh, demonstration event. Our supervisor is giving you a breakdown by the various uh, types of ciphers that are included on the test. And you can see um, uh, here in the at bash one, the team did really well. Uh, it's a very simple cipher, uh, but it's one of the more difficult ones, not many points were gained. And so there's both a, where are you strong and where are you weak? There also might be a discussion of, uh, because we know that your team is not gonna finish this test, of where do where does your team uh, spend its time and energy? Which problems does it decide to tackle? So you might uh, that might help you in that conversation as well. Uh, this is Crash Car Expert. So uh, as with all of these forms, your your students ought to be keeping an eye out for do they see their team number and their team name uh, written on these forms? Right. That's one of the challenges is always trying to make sure that we're matching the right score sheet with the right team, and so. In all cases, your team should know their team number. Um, in this particular case, the event supervisor is recording the build time because that's a tiebreaker. Uh, other things that get recorded before they run on the ramps, there's a, uh, an inspection process um, for the various uh, devices. And uh, in this case, uh, the item that got circled uh, suggests that rework is required. And so that might happen if the what the students built is interfering with the car's ability to run down the ramp, for instance. And so they, they get another two minutes to, to work on their device. There's a penalty that's assessed. Uh, but so that's what that mark would indicate. It looks like this team ran down ramp one and both the driver egg and the optional passenger egg both survived. But when they got to ramp two, uh, the passenger still survived, but the driver did not. And so in that case, it's the driver status of the driver egg that allows the team to move on to the next stage. And so uh, nothing has been recorded in ramp three because this is where the, the team was required to stop. Okay. Uh, for grasp a graph, you're gonna get two things. One, part one is gonna be, there will be a zip grade form and a category index uh, that goes with this one. I'm not gonna talk about those now. Those are, that topic is in the other video, but for the part two where the students are drawing a graph, your team is gonna get this as feedback as to how they did. And so you're gonna be able to see for all the various points, 30 points related to drawing a graph, the students are presented with a, a data table and asked to create a graph that is appropriate given the nature of the data. Uh, and so you can see they might be give either full or partial credit to, to a variety of things that are on there. Uh, there's also then several questions that get asked in regards to that, to that graph. And then the total of all of that is what becomes the part two score. Uh, and uh, in addition to giving you this back, we will also give you back the, the, the chart paper 
the, where your students drew their drew their chart. I didn't draw one here. Uh, this is just the blank of, of what's there. But you will now, we've decided that we're gonna release this information to teams as well. We will keep a photograph of it so that we have a we have evidence of, of what was scored, uh, but we're gonna return that to team to try to help you uh, get better feedback on your students' performance. All right, next is the mystery architecture uh, score sheet. Uh, and in this case, again, the team number. Uh, in this case, after the students have spent up to 20 minutes building, um, the supervisor will measure the height of their tower and the width of the base of the tower. The width in this, this year, the, the width of the base of the tower is the tiebreaker. And we'd like to know the tower before it gets tested in case it doesn't survive. And then after the students test their device by putting the ball on it, uh, the supervisor will mark yes or no, did the, did the su structure support the tennis ball? And what's the height to the top of the tennis ball? So that one's pretty straightforward. Ping pong propulsion. Uh, after the students are all done shooting, uh, the supervisor will very methodically collect the balls that are on the inner target, the pail, and then subsequently collect the balls from the pool area. And then we record based on the color of the ball, uh, how many in each category. So white balls, colored balls, and orange, and also the, the orange striped balls. Um, the color is orange. And then also the same information is recorded for the outer target as well. So we, and there's also an indication as to whether the practice log met the, met the requirements of at least 20 launches and three variables. And that's used in addition to receiving some points. Uh, the students get, uh, that's a tiebreaker as well. So reflection relay, there's two parts to this event. There's a, both the two dimensional challenge where the students are uh, the tabletop where they're setting up mirrors and trying to hit a target. So depending on their layout, we'll record how many mirrors they uh, successfully hit with the light, not just how many they tried to, as well as where did the light hit when it ultimately hit the final target? Is it in the, the zone one or zone two? Uh, in the three-dimensional challenge where the students are holding the mirrors, uh, we record two things. We record the amount of time they take preparing, and we record the amount of time that it takes for them to hit the target and hold the target. And in both cases, if you were to compare this information, we, we have three timers working, but if you were to compare this information to our the, the score sheets you see published online, what you'll find is only two of these numbers, two of these times are, are reported because we keep the two that are, that are most proximate, we discard the outlier as being less representative of what actually happened. So you'll see two of the, two of the three times reported in the official score sheets. Water rockets is another score sheet you'll get. What we're largely interested in is the flight time, uh, but what you'll see is before uh, they get a chance to, to fly, our, uh, our staff will inspect the rocket to see if it meets these various construction requirements. And in this case, a no is a good answer. Yes means there's a construction violation, so we're hoping not to see any yeses circled here. And the, the, the collected set of no's means that we can also circle no up here in the construction violation. Uh, this particular flight was, uh, for example, 22.3 seconds, and we've recorded that no part fell off during flight. So now one of the things that can happen is when we're launching the rocket is something might fall off. And that, for example, here we've recorded that yes, a part did separate from the rocket after it launched. Maybe the nose cone becomes unattached or something, something else falls off the rocket. And in that event, uh, were that to happen, uh, we would record the time of whatever part hits the ground first. And so that might have a relatively severe effect on the total flight time that we would record for that rocket. So, you know, four seconds might not be surprising if something something came loose, a fin fell off or something like that. Zombie so estimation is the last one uh, that we're gonna look at here. And in this particular event, the students are weighing uh, 100 grams or something. They're estimating the number of items in a container and they're also estimating the volume of, of boxes. And so the students are gonna fill their cup in part one before moving on to the other parts in the event. And um, they will take the score sheet with them and they will fill in their estimates of the various answers uh, for, those, for those items. And then when, after they turn the form in, the supervisor will have weighed their cup and then will enter in this additional data uh, here uh, in, in part one. So that when the students turn that form in, that part is blank. But by the time you get it back, 
the supervisor will have filled that form in or that particular answer. So, so that's the full set of the, of the additional score sheets that your team is going to get after the practice tournament to help you uh, be able to have uh, good feedback and to know what to work on more.